Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for our live webinar. Um, today we're going to do a deep dive into the key findings from a study that we recently conducted with GatePoint Research on the state of accounts payable and the global supplier payment processes. My name is Rob Israk. I'm Chief Marketing Officer at Topalti. And here with me today is Doug Barth, Co-Founder and Principal Analyst at GatePoint Research. Welcome, Doug. Hey, thanks, Rob. Good to be here. Good to have you here with us today, Doug. Uh, Topalti sponsored the survey because we're seeing from our customers and other accounts payable departments a general trend of increasing complexity and inefficiencies related to paying global suppliers. The entire process of paying suppliers, as you know, the folks on the phone probably can relate to, is very time consuming, uh, can be rife with a lot of error throughout the process, and it's not something most people want to concentrate on. Um, relative to some of the other tasks. So we wanted to do some research and understand better how big a pain actually is here, what areas about the payment process are most problematic, how satisfied are companies generally with approaches and the processes, systems that they're using today to handle these, um, and how companies are generally getting it done, um, where companies feel like they can improve, and where they're satisfied with the current processes today. Uh, Doug, can you give us a little bit of, of background on how you conducted this research? Yeah, sure. Um, in many ways, our research uh, correlates with uh, many of the assumptions uh, that we had going into it. Uh, but let me tell you how we did this. Uh, between uh, January and March of this year, uh, GatePoint uh, created a database of uh, finance executives within uh, companies known to be doing e-commerce, and we asked them to participate in an online survey that we called Strategies for Managing Supplier Payments. Uh, we have an email methodology that we use. We invite uh, these executives via email to go online and take a brief survey, and we got 100 senior management level decision making uh, executives to participate. Uh, they came from uh, organizations that had uh, annual revenues of between uh, 5 and $250 million. Uh, and I want to point out that a, a supplier uh, constitutes an outside partner, a vendor, a service provider, uh, or a supplier whose uh, payments are being made to. Uh, this is a voluntary process. Uh, these people were invited to take the survey, and they did so uh, online uh, without the use of telemarketing. So let me tell you about uh, the profile of the people that, uh, that we succeeded in getting here. You can see that uh, the pie uh, was uh, broken into three major pieces. The largest one were companies that were in the business services sector. Uh, also uh, behind it, about 22% came from the retail and wholesale trade sector. Uh, and media represented about uh, 17%. And we got really uh, senior people to uh, take this, as you can see. 18% uh, of the uh, survey participants were at the C level, uh, CFO, um, uh, and, uh, and uh, other uh, super senior management level executives. Uh, a little, little more than half, 51% of the participants, were actually at the VP level. And uh, the balance, 31% uh, uh, worked at the uh, director level. So these were clearly uh, management level people who understood this pain. Thanks, Doug. Uh, yeah, we were definitely happy to see that there was a pretty nice mix of senior level management participating in the survey, along with folks that were day-to-day uh, -day in the accounts payable world. Um, you know, uh, the, the folks in the accounts payable space are the ones feeling the day-to-day -day burden and pain from the process, but it actually has uh, a lot of implications to your business, the process of paying out to your suppliers. If your company relies on many partners and suppliers to deliver your products and service, a poor payment experience can actually lead to pretty strong attrition um, amongst your strongest uh, partners and certainly dent customer satisfaction. Um, arguably, that payment experience is the most important customer touch point with those partners, so you know it's important to get it right. And then the second piece where, you know, there's a strategic um, element of uh, paying out to your suppliers is just simply the inefficiency of the process, which essentially pulls away your finance resources from um, other functions that uh, could be higher value um, in terms of strategic growth for your company. Yeah, that's right, uh, Rob. Um, 
let's take a look at the uh, first question here uh, on our survey. We asked uh, these executives, how many payment transactions to your suppliers does your team execute uh, in an average month? And uh, in fact, I was kind of surprised by the volume of payments that companies make. Uh, as you can see from this graph, 82% uh, of the participants uh, indicated that they had made more than 100 payments uh, in a month. Uh, you can see that uh, the largest uh, of the brackets we had were 40% of the survey respondents saying they made between 100 and uh, 500. But uh, this is quite significant. Doug, did, uh, did that number of payments that depend on the company size? Uh, actually, Rob, it didn't. Uh, across the board, uh, based on revenue, the number of payments uh, really didn't change per se. Even, even smaller companies had issues uh, paying in high volumes. Got it. So, so th let's take a look at uh, how this correlated to those uh, internationally, those working internationally. Uh, we looked at uh, if these companies were paying international suppliers, and we found uh, that, yes, uh, global trade and partnering is happening. Uh, it's quite widespread. As you can see, 76% of the respondents said that they made payments uh, internationally. Yeah, I mean, this is actually right in line with what we've seen at Topalti. Uh, pretty much every business, large and small, with exception to some regional, you know, very regionally focused companies have a global supply uh, chain of sorts. And with the digital age, it's become even easier and easier to expand your partner network globally. Um, and even if you're not global today, most companies in their growth plans, in their growth aspirations, plan to expand beyond U.S. borders in the near future. So um, definitely wasn't uh, wasn't too surprising to us to see you know, the magnitude of people paying out to international suppliers. Yeah, it's a global world. So let's take a look at this next question. Uh, when we asked what forms of payment do you currently utilize? Uh, you know, as you know, that there are many ways to pay suppliers today, and all of them have varying uh, pros and cons. How many different payment methods did you see the average department offering? Uh, it was slightly more than three, Rob. Got it. And can you talk a little bit about which payment methods were most popular based on the research? Yeah, as, yeah and as we can see on this graph, uh, wire transfers are almost uh, universal across uh, businesses. 92% uh, claim they're using wire transfer. Yeah, that's pretty consistent with what we've seen um, as well. Wires are fast. They have strong comp controls in place to make sure that the payments actually happen. The reconciliation process is fairly straightforward. Uh, the downside of wires is that they, they are expensive. They can be in the $10 to $20 um, uh, a shot range. Um, and if you're paying 500 people through a wire, that, that adds up, of course. Yeah, and then there are um, paper checks followed by ACH and electronic checks. Yeah, I mean, it's always interesting to see how popular paper checks are st still are, that they are still very much a status quo. Um, and, you know, there are good reasons to employ checks. Uh, people, people still widely accept them, take them, know what they are. Um, however, the manual effort, when you look at checks, you know, some calculations out there show that between $9 to $15, um, you know, a, a check uh, in terms of cost to your business, in terms of labor. So, um, you know, the manually intensive process of checks is still there, and it's it's still surprising um, how popular they are, uh, despite the the inefficiencies they bring. And uh, ACH, uh, that's direct deposit, right? Yeah. So ACH is automatic stands for automatic clearinghouse. It's a direct payment to a domestic bank account. Uh, the challenge there really is that the supplier needs to provide that ACH data, but otherwise it can be very inexpensive to administer. Um, the main, the main issue with ACH is it can take several days to process. So if there's a timing issue, um, ACH is uh, sometimes not the way to go for, for that reason. Uh, but otherwise, it's very uh, efficient and cost effective. Um, electronic checks or e-checks are the international payment uh, version of ACH. So you'll find that overseas. Um, and that's also an important uh, payment method to consider as, as you uh, pay folks um, outside of the U.S. And these other uh, payment types that we saw, they're not uh, not nearly as popular. 
Yeah, they're not nearly as popular. They're popular, I'd say, in, in niches um, from what we've seen. You know, everyone knows PayPal, PayPal but from a traditional B2B standpoint, it's not a preferred method of payment. Uh, the fees can be high. You, of course, have to draft in and out of the account, which can be uh, painful and time-consuming. And uh, there's several countries, many countries in the world that, that simply don't like PayPal at all. So if that's your only payment method available to, to folks, that might work in the U.S. for small dollar amounts, but um, it's not going to uh, scale over the course of time. Um, we typically, you know, we, when we look at our Topalti customers, we can see that uh, it's a fairly low threshold of folks who use PayPal, but where they like to use it is for low dollar amounts. Um, and we can see that kind of, we see that behavior in our client base. Um, where we see PayPal being more popular is with e-commerce companies, marketplaces, virtual goods, sourcing, you know, digital monetization, spaces like that where there's a lower dollar amount, it's a little bit more consumer um, in orientation in terms of who you're paying. Uh, prepaid debit card is similar to PayPal in that it's not overall immensely popular, but it's a reliable payment method, particularly in some countries that don't have as strong a payment infra a banking infrastructure, and so it has its place. Um, and cash, of course, the direct cash or wire services um, is, is, again, a, another option that works in certain countries. In particular, the benefit is that, uh, you know, you receive your payment in your lo local currency. So when that's an important um, criteria, uh, direct cash comes into play. Um, but the reality that, you know, and I think the survey bears it out where three folks, you know, com companies are generally using only three payment methods at a time. Companies, as they scale globally, they, they, they don't have the staff and the means to handle too many different payment methods in once if they're using, if they're running all their processes uh, manually. Um, and so that's kind of where the, the, the push is as, as companies keep expanding. Yeah, got it. Um, this next slide, we, we wanted to drill into the forms of payments that they currently utilize. And we, uh, we drilled in just to those companies that uh, admitted to uh, currently making uh, uh, global payments. So that was about 78% of, uh, of the pool. We wanted to see if there was an effect. And, you know, it wasn't a dramatic effect. I think we can conclude that uh, there's at least a heightening effect among the companies that are currently making international payments. Literally every payment method except for PayPal uh, showed increased utilization. Yeah, and, you know, when you look at it from the supplier relationship, partners who are paid in their preferred payment method, their preferred currency, generally want to work closer, more closely with that company. So um, if you're trying to nurture a supplier base as you go globally, um, suppliers in every region have different payment methods, different payment preferences. Um, there's different information that has to be collected in every country of the world, even for the same payment method at times. Um, and oftentimes partners also want to be paid in their local currency, and that uh, provides a real value to them. So having too limited a selection of payment methods uh, may limit your company's ability to expand and attract partners to your network. Um, so, you know, as an example, if you want to pay someone in India, per se, um, ACH or international ACH, which is a preferred payment method in Europe, is actually a very bad choice there uh, because of the inbound fees associated. So you really have to kind of have process in place that can accommodate those preferences uh, by region. Yeah, thank you. Uh, this next one um, was, was really eye-opening. Uh, it's in the subject of uh, screening. We asked, do you regularly screen payees in accordance with national and international anti-terrorism, anti-money laundering, and anti-drug trafficking requirements? Uh, and, you know, I think you can see that 42% uh, of the audience said, uh, no, they, that they didn't uh, really screen for that. Uh, a third, 34%, said they do. And and a full 24% weren't even sure if they did. Uh, so I think this was the single most surprising finding and uh, perhaps the most concerning one on our survey. Yeah, it was definitely a surprising um, result that two-thirds of the folks may not be compliant with the laws. Um, and the, the scary part is the requirements are really now starting to be enforced by with real repercussions. Um, probably many of you guys fo uh, saw that uh, just uh, this last month, PayPal had to settle $7.7 .7 million with the U.S. Treasury Department for 
um, violating uh, the various requirements out there for you know anti money laundering folks who are on these anti money laundering, anti terrorism, anti watch lists, uh, the OFAC databases per se. Um, and uh, you know when when PayPal gets fined 7.7 .7 million dollars, um, the uh, you know kind of puts a warning out there in the marketplace that you know this 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 is a requirement. It's going to be enforced, um, and uh, you know it's it's to be taken seriously. But it seems like for the most part, most companies, based on this research, um, do not have process in place to to watch for this. Uh, you mentioned OFAC. Uh, can you shed a little light on OFAC, Rob? Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, the Office of Foreign Assets Control, um, essentially the Treasury Department's administration and enforcement arm when it comes to blacklisting countries and individuals who cannot legally be paid. Um, essentially, like I said, it's you know entities identified as money laundering, drug traffickers, uh, terrorists. Uh, Obama just uh, added cybersecurity. Um, uh, criminals to the list as well, um, so it's always getting larger and modifying and changing um, on a daily basis. Um, anyone doing so, uh, paying someone in, in one of these lists can be marked as a um, money laundering uh, launderer or someone aiding in money laundering, um, and that comes with pretty severe fines and potentially some uh, personal, um, serious personal uh, um, infringements as well. So how does a company avoid uh, paying uh, one individual? Got it. Yeah. If there if there's any question to who you're paying, you really should be work, uh, checking against these OFAC, SDN, or uh, specially designated national lists. Um, any other any other blacklist that exists by the U.S. and other international um, entities. Um, you should be doing this both at payee setup, um, checking against these databases to make sure that someone should. Be a PE for you, um, and you should also be doing it for every transaction before you are paying someone uh, to make sure that their status hasn't changed. Um, it's one extra process to take on, but given the enforcement and the requirements, um, it's definitely not a risk um, worth uh, worth taking for the business. Yeah, thanks. Um, so relating to the process, so let's move on to the part of the research that we did when we we're probing out how much uh, time is currently being spent managing the payment of suppliers. And uh, as you can see on this graph, uh, the vast majority, 72%, said that they were spending uh, more than uh, five hours per week. Um, and then uh, you can see that uh, it trailed off from there. But the vast majority said they were investing five hours or more currently. Rob, any, uh, any thoughts on that time investment? Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely a lot of time that's being spent on, you know, manually, barely, uh, you know, paying out suppliers. Um, I guess the first the first question mark is, you know, where could that time be used otherwise? Um, you know, I think the the process of paying out to folks, there's a manual execution of payment, setting up new payees, collecting the payment information, printing checks, issuing payment orders to banks, tax documents, checking against these OFAC databases we just talked about. But there's also reconciliation, uh, payment issues come up, um, and those actually, the payment issues, the reconciliation process are probably the most problematic um, and least predictable of the whole process So, because you can't exactly anticipate uh, how much time you're going to have to spend there. But there's a lot of back and forth um, and uh, processes throughout the whole entire process. Um, and I think when people answer this question, they're thinking of the process payment process kind of globally, not just remittance. Um, you know, remember, you know, five, five or more hours a week adds 20 hours a month, essentially. So, um, you know, many of the customers we have actually, it sneaks up pretty, pretty easily to 10 to 15 hours a week or closer to 40, 60 hours a month. So um, there's a lot of time spent on the responsibility here. Um, and, of course, the process of paying out to suppliers is definitely a cost center. So. It's a uh, you know it's a question mark of where you want your your people spending their time on. Yeah. Okay. Um, on this next uh, question, we wanted to probe level of satisfaction. We asked, what is the satisfaction level of suppliers uh, regarding the following aspects of your payment processes? Uh, and we we drilled down into a couple different uh, elements here, but you can see the uh, the payment process has has plenty of room for improvement. 
a 51% uh, report low to medium satisfaction with their current overall payment experience. And uh, uh, this one really jumped out at me. Yeah, I mean, particularly uh, in the area, the area of fraud monitoring here. Yeah, I mean, and it's definitely the one with the biggest external risk impact. Um, you know, the other items you can get by if you're accepting the inefficiencies and time spent on the process, but fraud man monitoring is, you know, a, a legal obligation. It can cost your company. So, um, so low satisfaction area there is is uh, is important. Yeah, and regarding the other areas, uh, response seems, you know, pretty pretty tepid in general to how people feel about their payment processes. Yeah, you know, the, there's a lot of different components to the payment process outside of just remittance. Um, it's time intensive, can be error prone, um, and if you're doing it all manually, it definitely is a resource drain. Yeah, and I never really thought about uh, uh, thought of tax information collection as part of that payment process too. Yeah, I mean, it definitely is. When uh, companies don't automatically uh, make tax collection a part of their payment and onboarding process suppliers, um, they, it exposes you to uh, risk. You know, instead, what typically happens in many companies is they wait until the end of the year to request W-8s, W-9s uh, from the suppliers. It's a bit of a um, kind of a chase at the end of the year. Um, you hopefully gather all the necessary documents um, but when the process is ad hoc it, like that, you miss document, it tends to be more inefficient. Um, and there's definitely a risk component there of, you know, if you're not collecting your tax supplier information up front when you're setting up pays, uh, you may be paying out to folks who are tax evaders, are not legal entities. So it's definitely the right process ideally is have it, collect that tax documentation up front so you know that you're paying to the folks you should be and have to go through this chase at the end of the year to collect, get all your documents together. I got it. You know, uh, next we looked at uh, uh, who has, uh, you know, who's currently uh, implementing or using a, a payment automation solution. Uh, Rob, uh, can you define that? Sure. Um, a payment automation solution essentially is a system that helps you manage the actual payment transactions um, involved in the accounts payable process. It maintains who gets paid, how they get paid, how much they get paid, uh, what accounts they get paid to. Um, and the background of the system is interacting with payment accounts, processes, tracking the remittance, helping reconcile payments, um, and can be involved in the uh, setting up of pays, compliance, regulatory requirements, um, et cetera. Yeah, and here are the uh, results. And as you can see, uh, when we asked the question, what kind of uh, payment automation system is currently in use, 37%, uh, about a third, uh, said they have plans for or they would consider uh, a payments automation uh, solution. So a uh, lot of room for growth here. Yeah, I mean, I think collectively that 37% who don't already have a payment automation system but are considering or beginning to consider one is, is quite telling. Yeah, it demonstrates that there's a, there's a lot of pain in the process already. Yeah, absolutely. The, the motivations to adopt a payment automation system usually are twofold. One is the need to streamline your operations to you know, better utilize resource and scale for growth. Um, and secondly, you know, certainly they bring a, a much better, more kind of lockbox tax and regulatory compliance approach to reducing risk. Um, and finally, that error-prone kind of problematic payment process can, can damage your supply chain and your partner relationship. So if, if that supply chain or, or supplier network is, is critical to your business, um, that's certainly not the, you know, something you, you want to uh, you know, streamline and make as efficiency and efficient and positive an experience as possible. Um, we, Topalti works with pit businesses where the companies want, really need to keep their partners happy and you do that by paying them on time in the payment method and currency they prefer, um, regardless of what country they reside in. So, uh, so we see a lot of uh, you know uptake on the, in that payment space. Yeah, and next uh, we drilled into those uh, survey responders who uh, claim to currently be using a payments automation system, and we asked them uh, how satisfied they were with it. And uh, you know the results here you can see are pretty clear. Uh, 
there are significant, uh, significantly higher levels of satisfaction. Uh, the largest uh, satisfaction uh, jumps can be seen in the payment accuracy and remittance methods and options. So I'm, I'm going to take a look at uh, some of the overall uh, observations uh, that uh, uh, this uh, survey exercise uh, taught us. Uh, as you can see, the survey participants, you know, by and large, they're handling a, a large volume of payments each month. 82% uh, had more than uh, 100 uh, of those payments per month, 42% uh, more than four, uh, 500. So most uh, are currently handling global payments, 76% said they're making payments to their international partners. It's a very time-consuming process. Uh, three quarters, 72%, said that their team spends more than five hours per week accepting invoices, approving payments, issuing payments, uh, handling issue resolution, reconciliation. Wire transfer uh, remains uh, the, the current virtual standard. Uh, this is followed by paper checks, uh, 88%, ACH, 80%. They're also widely used. 32% are using electronics checks, and uh, the average number of payment options provided for those we surveyed was three. And here's what kind of surprised us. Uh, Two-thirds, 66%, admitted that they, they are not currently using, or they're not sure they're using, uh, a method to screen the payees in accordance with anti-terrorism, money laundering, drug trafficking requirements. So uh, this is reflected in the 58% who, who said that they were they had low to medium satisfaction with their fraud monitoring uh, processes currently. 70% of the people are currently using an in-house system to manage those payment transactions, and only 13% are using a third-party option for their payments. So what can we conclude? We can conclude that the payment process, uh, there's a lot of room for improvement. Uh, over half, 51%, said that they had uh, low to medium satisfaction with their overall payment experience. And with over 70% of the departments uh, spending five or more hours a week, very time-consuming making uh, these payments. A half of the executives, 51%, report that they, uh, they could improve the way that their payment fees are managed, uh, the systems and processes to mitigate payment risks and stay within regulatory compliance is, is really dangerously lacking. Only 34% of the companies said they had a methodology in place to uh, monitor compliance. Uh, and the survey data really indicates that there's a potential for growth in payment automation solutions. A little over a third, only 37% uh, are currently using a payment automation system, and those who have uh, payment automation systems were, you know, indeed had a higher level of satisfaction with uh, the aspects of their payment process. Thanks, Doug, and uh, really thanks for all the research you've done here. It's been really terrific, and appreciate you uh, joining the call today to kind of review the the key findings. Um, it was a great summary of your uh, your research, and um, you know it's it's pretty clear that there are real issues with the payment, uh, the process of paying out suppliers, um, and that automating of those processes is a key tool to um, eliminate those issues. Um, yeah, I guess the question to ask is how um, how can how can uh, supplier payment problems cause issues in your organization? Um, you know, if you're looking at global expansion to take one, um, as you take on more suppliers and you have more global partners, um, how can you pay them most effectively? Um, you obviously, as you go globally and you expand your global supply chain, you want to make sure that your, your suppliers are satisfied um, and you, they stay with you, you're able to retain them as well as attract others. Um, otherwise, you know, you end up uh, reducing the quality of your, your partner chain and reducing choice in your goods and services. So um, really critical you get that um, equation right as, as you can globally um, and to expand your partner breadth um, without having to increase headcount and cost to do so. Um, the poor payment process can also lead to greater risk and exposure. Um, once you send money out, if you inadvertently pay someone that you shouldn't have that's on one of these regulatory um, uh, watch lists, um, there's a good chance that money is never coming back, and certainly there's a chance you might get in trouble with the authority. So making sure you have the process in place to do this uh, correctly uh, is critical. Um, and ultimately, like, like we've talked about, it's a resource allocation question of, you know, where do you want your team focusing their time on um, to help your company grow and scale globally? 
Um, you know, managing payments isn't the most rewarding use of a of a person's time, probably, and there's probably better better uses in terms of cash flow insight, analysis, forecasting, um, etc. So, um, so just before we wrap up, the uh, high level on who Tapalti is. Um, our mission at Tapalti is really to take the manual burden of global payments off your daily routine, um, so companies can grow faster and more profitably. Um, as you can see, a number of you know, well-known companies, GoDaddy, Chartboost, PulsePoint, Discuss, um, Outsource.com, Touch of Modern, uh, use Tapalti. The company has been around for about four years now, four and a half uh, now, Series B rounded uh, funded company. Um, and uh, we process over uh, 1.5 billion in transactions at this point with over 300,000 payees across the world. So um, company's been doing great. And uh, essentially, Essentially, what the system does is it takes everything from the process of setting up and onboarding uh, payees, gathering their tax information, making sure they're compliant folks to pay out to, gathering their payment preferences, their currency preference information, um, takes information and puts it through an entire uh, workflow for managing uh, payments so you're able to pay a high volume of payees in a very efficient time frame. You know, we talk to our customers most of them tell us that we basically removed four-fifths of the time that they spent uh, managing payments beforehand, um, a process beforehand that was largely manually. Sometimes you have a little, little, a few pieces of in-house software here and there um, handling remittance processes. Um, Topalti handles everything from the account funding, the payment instructions, the remittance, supplier verification, the corporate internal approvals, um, remittance reporting, reporting, and then everything on the back end in terms of exception handling, um, issue resolution, payment reconciliation, 1099 reporting and stuff. So it really looks at the comprehensive process of paying out to suppliers and seeks to streamline and automate that entire process, you know, while also um, improving uh, regulatory compliance and tax compliance processes. So, so, you know, to sum up uh, the system, really, it's all about scaling and helping companies uh, go global and manage a global supplier network um, in a very efficient time frame while reducing uh, manual processes and risk throughout, and, of course, strengthening your relationships uh, with your partners across the world um, by paying them on time, paying them in their uh, payment method and currency of choice, um, paying them accurately. Uh, and giving them better insight and visibility into their payment status. Um, so uh, thank you for your time today. Uh, before we wrap up, we'd love to take any of your questions, um, and, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll do our best to get to everyone's questions as they submit them. So you can use the, uh, the, the questions panel um, on your face to submit your questions if you have any. We'll, we'll wait a few, few moments while, we, uh, while you, you're able to to type those in. Okay, here we've got one question coming in. Does Topalti support currency conversion to remit international suppliers? Um, yes, the, the system actually has uh, not only currency, uh, currency preference built in the system, we're able to remit out in local currency in over 100 countries across the world. Um, so it's definitely a part of the system that um, we pride ourselves in. Okay. Um, how many payment methods do I need to uh, reach to make automation worthwhile? So it's a good question. Um, certainly it depends on what your global goals are, uh, your company goals are. Um, you know, most of the companies move to a system like Topalti uh, because they don't want the hassles of manual payment, um, too many regulations, too much time um, managing those entire processes. Typically, as companies approach and bypass 100 payments monthly, that's when the pain starts kind of passing a certain threshold where they really feel like they need to start automating the payments. Um, and when we talk to customers, we hear a lot of anticipation of, well, I'm paying 70 folks today, but I know the company is doubling and, you know, in two years I'll be well over 200 payments. And it's that anticipation of future growth um, and particularly going global and having, um, having to pay folks overseas, which is certainly the most problematic part of the payment process. Um, 
is when they start looking to automate their process and move to a system uh, like Topalti. Uh, one other question here. Uh, when I pay with Topalti, does my supplier see it coming from, uh, from the client or from Topalti? Um, the way the system is built, all interactions with partners appear to be coming from the customer, not from Topalti. So when the payment's made, the payee uh, sees it coming from the payer. So if GoDaddy is a customer, they're using Topalti. Uh, when they're paying someone out, the payee will see a payment from GoDaddy. Okay. Um, well, I think we've gotten through all the primary questions at this point. I um, really appreciate everyone's time um, for sticking around, and uh, uh, hopefully that today was, uh, was beneficial to you. Um, thank you for attending. Thank you, Doug, for your research and your insights you shared today. And if anyone has any feedback on today's webinar, please send it to – you can send an email to communications at Um And again, uh, we look forward to talking with you in the future. Really appreciate your time, and uh, have a good day.